Hey, so I wanted to talk about those influencer parents who rehomed their adopted son. Um, a friend of mine shared it on Facebook. And as I was reading the article, it appeared that a lot of people, and maybe it's just because I'm in marketing, so I appreciate the nuances here, but I feel like a lot of people don't understand what it means to monetize your audience. All right. So, uh, yeah, so read an article, what it was. It's uh, here, I'm just pulling it up on my phone here, but I'll certainly. Here's, yeah, here's the image. Parenting YouTubers are receiving backlash from critics who say they rehomed their adopted son with developmental disabilities after monetizing videos about him. So specifically, you, you can directly monetize videos, right? Like this woman and her husband, they've got sponsors and she's like a parenting, you know, YouTuber influencer person, right? And even in the article, they found uh, a specific picture that was a sponsored ad or sponsored post from Dreft, the laundry detergent. But what I feel like people don't realize is that anything that this woman did to build her brand is marketing, which is a business function. Everything is monetized. Everything. It it counts as like, uh, like, so you consider marketing as like an internal cost slash investment that businesses make, right? So she latched on to the concept of adoption as a brand builder, right? It's the pillars of her brand, parenting, adoption, all of that. She used her audience, right? Her audience's attachment to adoption and parenting as a means to grow her audience. Before she grew her audience, she could not get sponsored ads. So everything from a business perspective was calculated to grow her audience. And even now, when you look at all of the media attention that this story has gotten so far, especially with inflammatory titles like Rehome, Her Adoptive Son, um, it's just going to get more attention. And based on the social media comments that she's getting, a lot of the attention has been positive. Yes, there has been a ton of negative comments, but not nearly as many when compared to the positive comments. So there may be more as this starts to balance out and the story gets outside of her audience, people who are already loyal to her and it reaches people like me who I'm like, I don't know you, but this sounds terrible. But yeah, so they've done this thing where they've, essentially worked with an uh, an agency to rehome or find a new home for this child. Hey, rehome, it sounds like he's a dog. Um, find a new home for this child because they said that his developmental disabilities were too much for them to handle. And if I recall correctly, she's already got, I think, three biological children. Um, so yeah, so they found this new home. So I, th I guess what I want to highlight is that anything that was posted with this child on her social media channels, whether it was sponsored or not, anything where she posted about the adoption process, anything she posted, oh, like the homecoming, meeting him for the first time, any of that stuff, it built her audience to what it is right now. That audience is what enabled her to get sponsors like Dreft, which makes it a business decision. Even as a marketer, if I put out something for free, it's because I'm hoping to generate some sort of lead from it or build a relationship or get a referral, prove my authority in my niche. So even if it's free, that is what I'm hoping to do. Big companies put out free stuff all the time because they're trying to build brand awareness. Why do they care about brand awareness? Because in the end, it helps them generate money. People don't buy stuff from the, you know organizations or, or people that they don't know. So anything she did to build her brand awareness, to build her brand period and to grow her audience, access to her audience is what she sells to these sponsors. So. I don't know her, I haven't followed this story, but if you look at it from a marketing perspective, anything that was public and clearly on her brand channels, whether it was free or sponsored, to me is a form of monetization. If you are leveraging this person, this child, this human being to build your audience, right? 
then it was monetized because it had the goal of earning money. All right. It's just like when people get naked somewhere, they are naked in the hopes of, of earning money. They got naked and recorded it. They're naked in the hopes of earning money. So that is what this means. That is what this means. And now they're asking for privacy as they try to grieve. She put her whole life online. But we want privacy now because everybody's mad. Well, not everybody, but lots of people are mad. Now we want privacy. No, this is the response that you get when you do something without transparency, something that appears to be incredibly awful. So yeah, from a marketing perspective, any content, content marketing, that's my specialty, any content you put out has brand goals sales goals, business goals associated with it. Therefore, it's all part of your business plan. So if it's not directly monetized, we could say that it's indirectly monetized. Anything that helped her build her audience is what she used to get these sponsors.